Question 7 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination Section 2. A student uses a gold leaf electroscope to investigate the photoelectric effect. A deflection of the gold leaf on the electroscope shows that the metal plate is charged. The student charges the metal plate electroscope and the gold leaf is deflected, as can be seen in the diagram. And part A of question 7 asks us, ultraviolet light is shone onto the negatively charged metal plate. The gold leaf electroscope does not discharge. This indicates that the photoelectrons are not ejected from the surface of the metal. And you've got to suggest one reason why the photoelectrons are not ejected from the surface of the metal. Well, for a start, the energy of the incident photon is not large enough to eject an electron from the surface of the metal. Then no electrons will be ejected and the electroscope will hold its charge. Another possibility which is forgotten about is that the metal surface is actually unclean. There may be an oxide coating on it and that would inhibit the electrons being ejected from the metal surface. So that's two possible reasons for it. Remember, when we're dealing with photons being incident on the metal plate, each photon has got an energy E equal to HF, where E is going to be the energy of the photon, H is going to be Planck's constant, and F is going to be the frequency of the photon. So the higher the frequency of the photon, the more energy it will have. So this particular case, maybe that photon arriving at the metal plate hasn't got a big enough frequency to give it enough energy to eject a photoelectron from the metal plate's surface. Question 7, Part B. The student adjusts the experiment so that the gold leaf electroscope now discharges when the ultraviolet light is shone onto the plate. The work function for the metal is 6.94 times 10 to minus 19 joules. And you're asked to state what is meant by a work function of 6.94 times 10 to minus 19 joules. It's only for one mark and you gain your marks by using this sentence here. The work function is the minimum amount of energy that an electron needs to gain in order to escape its metal atom. Now we can think of the metal atom like this. You have the blue ball standing for the electron and that electron is inside a deep well. Now in order to escape, that electron will need to have a certain amount of energy to escape. And that's what the work function really is. So in this case, the work function for this particular metal is 6.94 times 10 to minus 19 joules. And that means that that electron here needs that amount of energy in order to escape up here, which means it's escaped the clutches of the atom. Remember, the electron 
absorbs all the energy of the instant photon. It can't absorb little bits of it. It's got to absorb all or nothing of the energy of the photon. So if that energy of the photon is less than 6.94 times 10 to minus 19, minus 19 joules, it will not escape the atom. If it's more than that, it will escape the atom and have some excess kinetic energy. Question 2. The irradiance of the ultraviolet light on the metal plate is reduced by increasing the distance between the gold leaf electroscope and the ultraviolet light source. State what effect, if any, this has on the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons ejected from the surface of the metal. And you must justify your answer. Well, let's begin with the equation of the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons emitted from the surface of the metal. Remember, EK stands for the kinetic energy of the photoelectron. HF, well, that's the energy of the incoming photon. And HF0, well, we know that to be the work function of the metal. Now, closely look at that equation, and you can state that there's no mention of the irradiance in that equation. The kinetic energy of the photoelectric effect just depends on the energy of the incoming photon and the work function of the metal. And it's nothing to do with irradiance of the ultraviolet light. So what we can say here then is that varying the irradiance of the incident radiation will have no effect on the energy of the radiation's photons. So there'll be no effect on the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron which is emitted from the surface. Question 7c. The graph shows how the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons ejected from the metal plate varies as the frequency of the incident radiation increases. The threshold frequency for the metal plate is 1.05 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz. Now if you look very close at the graph then, if we have a photon coming in with any frequency greater than 1.05 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz, it will release photoelectrons from the metal surface with excess energy. If we have a frequency of the photon which is less than 1.05 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz, then it will not release any electrons from the surface of the metal. So this, this line in here indicates no electrons being emitted. At the threshold frequency itself, if the photon has that frequency, which matches the threshold frequency, then it will shake the electron away from the surface of the metal, but they'll have no, zero, excess kinetic energy. And we can get that from the little equation here. You can see if we imagine a photon coming in with an energy equal to the HF0, which has a frequency, the photon is a, has a threshold frequency, F0, then EK will become, the energy of the photon will become HF0 this time, take away HF0, which is the work function, and you can see you're going to get no excess kinetic energy. So that happens at this point here. Now, if we have a different metal with a lower threshold frequency, then the graph will look like that. Once again, if the photon is any, f if the frequency of the photon is less than that, you'll get no emission of a photoelectrons from the surface of the metal. Any, uh, if the frequency of the photon is greater than 0 0.99 times 10 to the power 15, greater than that, then you will get release of the photoelectrons from the surface of the metal, and they will have excess energy which appears as kinetic energy. But at the threshold point, the electron will have no excess energy, therefore it will have no kinetic energy at that point. So the graph looks like that. Now, part D, 7 part D, says explain why the photoelectric effect provides evidence for particle nature of light. Well, this all can be summed up in this famous statement here. Waves, if, if radiation has to be considered as a waveform, then waves cannot knock electrons off the surface of a metal. Only particle structures could do that. So in order to explain the photoelectric effect, light must be considered as a stream of particles called photons, or bundles of energy. These photons carry energy, and they're like 
particle light structures. It's the only way in which electrons can be knocked off the surface of a metal if we consider that radiation light is of a particle nature and we call those particles photons and the energy the particles carry depends on the frequency of the light. That's what won Albert Einstein his famous Nobel Prize.